Okay, hi friends. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. And today I want to show you how uh, to do some eco printing, flower hammering, fabric stuff. So first we have to go and collect some flowers for that. So you're gonna need flowers. I'll talk about it more when I come back in. Uh, but if you wanna skip the whole me picking flowers sort of vlog part of the tutorial, I'll put on screen the uh, the timestamp for when you can jump to to just get into the part where we're actually like doing the craft. But we're doing fla flower hammering, flower pounding. What the heck? <laughs> Dog. Okay, anyway, uh, so let's go pick some flowers first. Let's go. So marigolds work really well for this. So I'm gonna get a bunch of these pretty yellow ones and then I'll also get some of these stripey ones. <laughs> Hello Ziggy. Ziggy Stardust coming and showing off how big he is. You're so cool. Anyway, I'm gonna get some of these red ones too. Also, we're gonna get some Cosmos. I've got some darker ones over there, so let's go grab them. Some orange ones here too. There's some Cosmos. The tomatoes are all done. Still a few fruit on them, but the plants are dead. Oh, here's a nice bright yellow one. So pretty. A honeybee. See if I can get that in the light better. Working hard. Oops, sorry everybody. These ones are so sweet. Hey Daisy. This thing is still very big. Well, still. It's gotten much bigger. It's about three feet higher than that thing now. And the seeds are all ripening. Ready to collect. There's more Cosmos here. Oh, look at these pretty zinnias. Another bee. Ones. Look how dark those ones back there are. The nasturtium flowers don't work well, but their leaves make a nice print. I wonder if that would make a nice print. Looks like it. Try some of them. Look at this. Nasturtium seeds. Something I can help you with. Now you're just hanging out. The bachelor's buttons are such a pretty blue, but it doesn't stamp out. It doesn't really work well for this. They are pretty. More Cosmos. Well, that's a cute little one. And at the back of the garden, there are all of these seedlings <laughs> that came up on their own. These are Cosmos. 
it took a while. But they look good. See, this is the last row of the garden. This stuff all came up on its own from the seeds that I scattered from the plants from this year. So these are this year's seeds already made plants all around here. They won't make it this year, but that means that next year lots of flowers are going to come up here for sure. That's the flower garden. It's almost November. It's like the 18th of October right now. And these are still all looking so pretty. I'm so happy. Look at these. It's the Cleome. And it's gone to seed. I've already collected a lot of these seeds. But see, these will be here next year too, because the seeds are just dropping right underneath. So next year, these are going to come back all on their own. I didn't even have to spread any of them. And that'll be so pretty. You can also use these Cosmos. There's not very many left on the plant, so I'll just grab two. Leave the rest for the bees. See this how they go to seed. So they dry out. First, let's see. The flower dries out. Turns into this sort of green seed head and then the seed head dries out they sort of puff out a little bit more and then when it's fully dried isn't that neat they just sort of come right off and since these have been coming right off we got baby plants for days little seed saving tip while we're here here's my calendula so the calendula flower looks like that and then the petals fall off. And what's left after that happens, the petals fall off and then it dries out. And these are the seeds, each one of these curly things. Like, there's one seed. And they just <laughs> fall off here. So next year we'll have more calendula here. It got pretty windy, so Cleome fell this way and the cosmos fell that way. Look at how big this kale is. So tall. <laughs> it's like a tree. Another kind of marigold here. See the marigolds? So for these, for marigolds, the seed happens by the petals fall off first. They dry out and fall off. Then there's those middle little flowers. And then they dry out. Kind of look like that. And then they just keep drying out until they kind of look like this. And then you break off that and the seeds are inside that little pod. Those are the seeds. Next year's marigolds. White cosmos won't work for this, but look at how pretty my white cosmos are. Beautiful. All these bright orange marigolds underneath. So happy. Ooh, some yellow chamomile. Or calendula. Yellow calendula, sorry. Isn't that pretty? It's like a dandelion. And there's the seeds before they dry out. There's the seeds when they dry out. You can't sneak up on me. You can't. You're too loud. You give yourself away. You're so handsome though. He just pretends to eat. He follows me around. He's not eating, that's a zinnia. <laughs> Silly boy. Speaking of zinnias, there's a pretty zinnia. Opening lots of new blooms over the next few days. When zinnias are done, they drop all their petals. Here's another zinnia. First, their petals dry out like that. And then you have a dry flower and then they drop their petals. But if you look, the petal is actually the seed. Here, let me pull one out. Of course that didn't work. Okay, 
Okay, hold on. Gotta wiggle it out of there. There we go. See? There's the seed. You don't need the petal to be on it. There's a zinnia seed for next year. Hello, sir. Hope you're having a good day at work. Don't work too hard. There's another zinnia. Another one. These ones are like purple in the middle. Isn't that cool? Oops, sorry. This one still has tons of flowers coming out on it. See, lots of new ones coming. There's another example of a dried one that's ready to collect seeds from. Isn't that one pretty? Okay. And a couple more of these. Also over here, marigold seeds coming up for they won't survive this round but again that means that more next year chamomile chamomile ground cherry so that's a zinnia marigolds marigolds um chamomile <laughs> look at that kind isn't that cute they're like little hearts these don't use uh do well for what we're gonna do though so we don't need to pick any zinnias my little tiny white zinnia. So cute! And look at that one. So pretty. Okay. Also, check out this arugula. I think this one's arugula. It's like a lettuce green, and it, we let it go to seed. But look at how crazy the whole plant is. Cute little yellow flowers, but it's huge! And it made this big root. Crazy. And these seed pods are from a radish. I, I let one of our radishes go to seed. Sorry, it's hard to do this with one hand. Let's see what the seeds look like. It's not all the way done yet. <laughs> oops, well, oops, there's radish for next year. This thing is growing really well. This is a lettuce also. And then a curly kale. Look at this dino kale. So crazy. Okay, back to the cosmos. Let's grab a couple more of this two-toned kind. And then there's a two-toned kind. Oh wait, one more thing. Look at one of my favorite nasturtiums from this year. The blossoms are hard, having a hard time because of the cold, but so pretty. They're so pretty. Okay, there's a Cosmo over here that's two-toned that I want some of. Here it is. Goes from white to pink. So pretty. Only a few blossoms on that one though. Here's their seeds. That one's really pretty, so let's make sure that one comes back. Okay, the only other thing we need is some greenery because we have all the colors we need yeah 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 uh, but we need something green to press in and i want to try parsley because it's so green when you put it in pesto you know i feel like it'll make a nice print we'll have to see oops i just ripped out the whole plant that was not my intention hold on a little parsley Okay, and the other thing that I already know works really well is marigold leaves. They just make such a pretty print. So I'm gonna grab a branch or two from a couple of marigolds. My hot peppers are ready to harvest. I gotta get them this week because it's gonna frost. And the shisho has all gone to seed. Another pretty marigold. I just love these ones. They're so pretty. And I love, love, love these ones. 
I don't think we need a yellow calendula. I think we'll be good. All right, I think we're good. Let's go inside and get started. Back with flowers. <laughs> it's time to use our flowers. Oh God, my phone, chaotic energy. Okay, so now let me just get into it. How far down can you see? Let's go a little lower here. So for today, I'm gonna show you how to do flower. Oh, I didn't even grab an example. This, this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing some flower impressions on fabric, some flower pounding, some eco printing, some flower transferring. I don't know what you wanna call it, but those are all the things. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. Aren't these cute? This little pair of pajama shorts. That's what we're doing today. And the marigolds, so fun. Also on some naturally dyed fabric. Looks pretty neat. So that's what we're doing today. What you're gonna need for that is some cotton fabric. I have this nice square piece of an old bed sheet. You could use a pillowcase or just whatever cotton. It needs to be cotton or I guess you could use linen. I'm using cotton though. Um, what you're gonna need to do though, or what I did I should say, is I pre-mordanted these. So I scoured these fabrics, I washed them or soaked them, simmered them with uh, dish soap for, I'm gonna say nearly an hour to just get out any bits of like waxy, cotton is kind of rough. You just need to scour the fabric. Then I um, pre-mordanted the fabric with iron. So I have my own iron mordant. I will include the recipe, not the recipe. I'll include the link to the video where I made the iron mordant, but you can check that out if you want to know how I mordanted this fabric. And then I let it dry after washing it out and then I ironed it and that's where we're at. That's where we're starting with our fabric. Also gonna need a hammer or a mallet uh, or both. I'm gonna probably use both. And then you need a hard surface. So I went to the garage and had Alex saw me this piece of wood in half. And then I have this piece of like, it's not cork board, like plywood. Anyway, I have that. I'm putting that on my carpet because I'm doing this inside. I would kind of not really recommend for you to do it inside. It gets really loud um, because you're going to essentially be pounding the flower into your fabric. So I've layered those two on top of each other just to give me a bit of a working surface. And then I'm going to be putting the fabric down, the fabric I want to print. And then I'm going to take my floral things and I'm gonna put them on, oops, ripped that, put them on the fabric and essentially we're gonna hammer it in. Before that though, I want to show you some of the flowers that I collected in the garden and kind of uh, explain my plan here because I do have a bit of a plan. So here are my flowers. Probably a bunch of spiders also. So for green things, I got uh, some Creeping Charlie. I think this will work just because it has nice veins on it. You excited? You excited? Come here. Anywho, uh, I think that because it has those nice veins, I think it should print nicely. I already know nasturtium makes a nice print. It's not super like strong or like dark, definitely not as dark as like a marigold leaf, but uh, it will make a print. Parsley, I don't know. I have flat parsley and curled parsley. I haven't tried it, but I thought worth a shot. And then I've got a whole bunch of Cosmos, like a lot of different kinds of Cosmos here. I've got really pretty pink ones that go from light pink to dark pink. And then I have ones that go from dark pink to light pink. And then I have one in here somewhere, really pretty. And they have these fully dark ones, so pretty. And all of these things do different stuff when you hammer it in. Uh, they look completely different from each other on the final fabric. And then this one that goes from white to light pink or light pink to white. I think I have two of those in here somewhere. They're all pretty. Oh, here it is. Isn't that so cute? Anywho, uh, so we've got lots of Cosmos to work with. Another good reason to do this outside, I don't know if I said this reason yet, is uh, these definitely have spiders living on and around them. So that's just like par for the course here. And then we've got one of those orange Cosmos, very pretty. And then tons of marigolds. I got three bright yellow ones 
two different varieties though. Here's like the lemon yellow and then this is the sunshine yellow. That's how I've labeled them different. Lemon yellow gigantic, sunshine yellow medium. Uh, and then more kinds of marigolds. These are all the ones that Alex and I call the Umbrella Corp marigolds because they kind of look like the Umbrella Corp logo, <laughs> sort of, I guess. So pretty though. These ones make a really cool pattern because both colors hammer in to the fabric, but differently. You'll see what I mean. And then we've got this nice double, which is just pretty. I think the petals will make for a pretty imprint. And then a whole bunch of the red ones that are outlined in orange. I really like these ones. They make a really pretty print, a really dark print. And I like those. I got a couple that are kind of unique in that they're lighter. Oops, that's not the right kind. And that they have different sort of color things going on. So that's exciting. And then I got a couple of orange ones because orange is beautiful and it prints really well. So I got those. So that's all for marigolds. Uh, and then I got, oh, there's another Cosmo. And then I got one orangey yellow chamomile, uh, calendula, I mixed those two up, calendula. And then uh, I also have marigold leaves because these print really pretty and I like how they look when I hammer them. So I collected a bunch of them. So that is all of the stuff we're gonna be hammering today. Test out anything in your garden though um, and see what works. Cause there might be like a ton of things I've not tried. I just know that my zinnias did not make a really good print. So I'm not bothering with them again, but the Cosmos look awesome. So I am going to do them. Okay, now let's get a little bit closer for the hammering part. Okay, so we're gonna start with the fabric over our wood that we're gonna be working on trying to put a print on basically. And I'm going to start, just cause I like how they look, with one of these really dark purple Cosmos. I'm just gonna squish that down a little just to sort of flatten it in. And then we're gonna put a piece of fabric on top. You can put your working fabric so that you get two prints on the same thing. But I like the, how clear it is on the one side. So I am going to just put a completely different piece of fabric on top. There we go. Then gonna hammer gently all around. You can see it sort of starts to bleed through right away. And I like to start by going all the way around the edge and then just making my way in. All right. And then I'm gonna peel off that back. And you'll see a really nice print is left on that back, but when we peel off the flower, you'll see that that side that we put the the bottom fabric you'll see the bottom fabric is like beautiful sorry i can't do things and talk at the same time apparently just look at that let me bring you in really close to see that so pretty So they're way too thick to just hammer onto the fabric. What you have to do with marigolds is pull the petals out. It's a little bit more time consuming, but it's worth it because these make a really pretty print. There we go. All right, there we go. A little bit more <laughs> labor intensive, like I said. And then we'll put the cover piece on top, squish it down a little. And then hammer it. Okay. Then I pull it off and then watch 
watch this. Ah, look how pretty it is. Look at that. Isn't that magic? Look how bright those two prints are. They're so pretty. And the other side still got a pretty print, just not not as spectacular as the one on the, the actual fabric side. Uh, next, let's do a leaf for fun. And let's have it coming out of the marigold because this is a marigold leaf. Put everything face down. So the top of the leaf is on this bottom fabric. And then we'll put it down like that. Pull it off, and again, pull it off. The leaf made a beautiful print on both sides. Isn't that just spectacular? It's just so bright. What else can we try? Let's do a red marigold. side. Still pretty. Let's try another Cosmo now. There we go. This one got a little scooched around, but still. as organized as that first one. Okay, let's do some orange marigolds next. So these ones I'm just going to put on there without, without making them into a flower. So because we mordanted the fabric, these colors should stick around for like ever. I don't know if that's 100% true, like forever, forever. I'm sure they'll fade over time and sort of wash out over time. I don't think they'll wash out, but you know what I mean? Fade with washing. But I mean, geez Louise, look at how bright these colors are. So pretty. Okay, what to do next? Why don't we do some leaves? So we know the marigold leaf looks cool. Now let's do a nasturtium leaf. Okie dokie. Oh wow, that's cool. All right, now let's just, huh, pretty pale but still there. Pale, but still there. More of an outline. So really, the nasturtium, we should put it on face up, because there's the reflection print, and this is what we actually got on our fabric print. Still pretty. Parsley. Let's try parsley. Let's see if we can get it to flatten out for stamping. Let's see what we got. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's pretty. Smells really good too. All right, and then we have that other leaf in here somewhere. This one. So let's put this one in face up because it's got the same sort of idea as a nasturtium and see if that works out for us. All right. Ooh, that looks awesome. do the calendula. I'm kind of nervous about how big the middle part is because I don't want all that water up here. And hope that that works. So pretty. Little sunshine. Why don't we do a really stripey marigold? how bright that print comes and such contrast oh so fun the one that's white in the middle oh, our first one's starting to turn blue pretty too. Well, let's do a couple more in here. So we did parsley, we did all the leaves, I think. I think we should do another Cosmo, another one of the dark ones. That bright yellow marigold. Actually, let's do that bright yellow one on this side. Ooh, let's try this one. worked not perfectly but still nice
Let's go through all the flowers that we got one by one. Um, let's start from the very beginning though. So this pretty purpley pink Cosmo makes this beautiful blue flower print. These cute little marigolds make the yellow. And then these red marigolds make that deep sort of, I don't even know, brown, burnt. It's got like a black outline, I wanna say. Dark, dark color. And then the orange for these orange petals. And then we went with a light Cosmo to make that middle one. And for leaves, we did a nasturtium. I don't have that leaf now because I hammered it in. And then some curly parsley. Came out so pretty. And then the Cosmo with white on the inside. And another one of those stripy yellow marigolds, so pretty. And then my singular calendula flower. And we did another dark one, that yellow marigold. More leaves, we've got the, the flat parsley here, love that one. And the nasturtium leaf again, more marigold leaves. Another Cosmo, more marigold leaves, more marigold flower uh, petals and more marigold petals. And it creates, this beautiful piece of fabric. Look at how pretty that is. Is that not so pretty? You can just hang that up in your house. Or I can keep printing it. I can add things in between. I think I'm going to do some stamping on this though because I've been making stamps, but I think this might be my favorite print on this whole piece of fabric. It's either this one or the first one we did just because it's so pretty. And this one's so dark, like it's like indigo. So pretty. And the marigolds look so pretty too. I love how yellow that is. Isn't that nice? And then the reverse piece that was just sort of, I was using it to hammer on, it's pretty too. Not so organized, but still has lovely prints on it and can be used for something pretty. Maybe I'll make a headband out of this one. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? Jeez. It's actually the perfect timing. So uh, as the sun starts to come in, let me try and, can I get out of it? Good, I can. So we finished the piece of fabric. I <laughs> got out of the sun. If I go forward at all, I'm fully in the sun. But anyway, we finished the full piece of fabric. Look at it. Try to look at it between the sun let me close the blind. Isn't that so nice? Look at the pretty colors in here. Look at them up close. Aren't they so pretty? Oh, that's the back. Look how pretty it is. Ta-da! Ta-da! And all together, it's this really pretty fabric. I'm really happy with it. What do you think? It's super easy though. You just have to mordant your fabric, which is something that you need to know how to do, I guess, before coming here, which just so that you know, it's, it pre-treats the fabric so that the fiber uh, will accept the color from these flowers. So by having it mordanted, pre-mordanted, the color on the flowers will really hold on to the fabric and then it'll stay permanent. So that we can make something out of this, like a shirt. Oh, that's so cute. Or like a wall hanging, wouldn't that be pretty? We're moving as you might be able to look. Handmade sweaters, <laughs> that's actually a real box. Anyway, we're moving. Flora's fabric. Um, anyway, but maybe after we move, I can sew this into something. But you know what I think I'm gonna do for next week's video? That's it, by the way. The tutorial's over. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the tutorial part of this, give it a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment letting me know that you liked it. Um, but listen, cause I'm not finished. <laughs> I think for the next week's video, what I'm gonna do is show you my stamping. So I'm going to do, uh, I think a stamp carving video cause I've been getting really into uh, like rubber and linoleum carved stamps. Don't worry about it. 
uh, I'm gonna show it all to you. But basically I stamped some of this other fabric. So this is another fabric that I printed the same way that I just showed you, but a bigger piece. And then I stamped it <laughs> with handmade stamps. Look at that chimkin, so cute. Look at this little flower, very cute. Different flower, a little spot, a leaf. Is there anything else cool in there? Another leaf. There's another cool leaf somewhere. I think that that's it. I did like a marigold leaf. Anyway, uh, I'll show you that next week, stamp carving. And then you can stamp your own hand printed fabric and you'll just have this weird, unique, one of a kind fabric like this one. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. Again, uh, thank you for subscribing if you're subscribed. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for liking if you liked. If you haven't liked it, then please click the like button because I would appreciate it. And also, oh yeah, thank you so much to my patrons, to all of you supporting me on Patreon. I really do appreciate you. Um, here's a thunder kiss. Thunder, can you? Here's a thunder kiss for my patrons. Mwah. So that's a thunder kiss for you. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon. If you would like to support me and the channel and all that we're doing here, which is basically arts and crafts and anything crafty, uh, if you are into that stuff, yarny things, embroidery, um, what else do we do? And now we do flower pounding, natural dye, crochet, maybe some knitting in the future. If you like that stuff uh, and you wanna support the growth of the channel, then definitely check out the links in the description of this video. I will link my Patreon and all of the different ways that you can support the channel in that description box. So check it out, subscribe, like the video. I think I've said that enough times. The YouTube algorithm gods, I must bow to them. I must. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Bye.